uh, Germany and today I would like to talk to you about our implementations in producing of trip trip steel laminates. So the other one. Okay, I see. Uh, basically, this presentation is based on a published work, so it's quite a large work. Nevertheless, I will try to squeeze it uh, in 10 minutes. Uh, the plan is, I would say, typical introduction, experimental details, results, and some discussion. Um, speaking of the background, I think most of you know what is a Damascus steel is. It's an ancient composite which was made of uh, steel of low, low carbon and high carbon steel. And you just forge it, mix it up with layers, forge it and obtain in the end very thin layers and you gain uh, ductility from soft steel and you gain uh, strength from the, uh, from the hard steel. Um, now that we are developing in steel production, uh, uh, we could just say, okay, let us take some modern high strength steels and replace them and do the same. So we expect that then uh, the effect of strengthening and ductility improvement would be even higher. For example, we could take a twip steel as a <coughs> soft and ductile steel and Instead of high carbon steel, we can take mercantilic or trip steel, transformation induced plasticity, which uh, has really good strengthening effects. The question is now how can we uh, forge it and produce laminate? Because this type of steels, they are oxidizing really high, they are stainless. And we need to somehow get rid of this uh, surface layer, but um, without really expensive methods like vacuum or something. And here, accumulative roll bonding can help us. It's as shown on this sheet, pretty similar to uh, the ancient technology. You just prepare two pieces of metal, degrees, wire brush, and then stack, roll bond, cut again, and so on. And this method allows to uh, bond practically any materials which are not bonded by another methods. So we have improved strength, ductility, energy absorption capacity, fracture toughness, and so on. So, uh, so the goal of this work was to implement this method in order to produce laminates out of trip, trip steel. These are two steels which were designed in our University of Friday. Uh, they are quite similar in the uh, chemical composition, 1666, which means chromium, manganese, and nickel. And the other one is 1669. So, yeah, we could just skip this part. It's, we have the S-cast material, we just uh, reshape it and make a hot rolling. So, before rolling, we have degrees brush and stacked. Um, laminates, which we then stick together. We make annealing, and then in the end we have laminate, which has more than two layers. There are some works which show that it's possible in principle to make a two-layer material, but if we would like to develop further, we need to know, okay, could we, could we go further, more than two layers, could we produce at least four? Uh, this is the initial condition of the steel. It's quite homogeneous. There is no uh, given uh, microstructure, no, uh, no, no texture, I would say. Um, after we have produced the first roll bonding, if we can see the twip trip layer. We could see some black spots. What is this? This is the deformation lenses. So the point is when you do the brushing of the steel, you get rid out of this oxide. You activate the surface which is necessary. However, some, some of the material just smears up into some kind of a bulk, small bulk, 
highly deformed uh, particles, which are deformation lenses. It's, we can see that it's mostly an oxygen, but it's not an oxide. It's some kind of a highly deformed matrix with additional amount of oxide. Uh, then we do the annealing. We could see the annealed structure with some preparation-induced martensite. Again, no texture because we've done the annealing. Um, interestingly, you could see that the drip layer of a more soft steel, it, is, it has finer grain, grains uh, on the sides. It's an interesting effect. And if we would look closer to a deformation lens, we could see that it's uh, fully changed in its microstructure. It's not a highly deformed material matrix anymore. It dissolved into manganese silicon oxides uh, mixed up with austenite greens, really fine. Finally, we do the second rolling. This is our laminate, which has four layers. You can see it with the EDS map. So, this is the, the layer which was formed during the first accumulative roll bonding, and it's perfectly bonded. You, you're not able even to see the border here. Only when you do the chemical analysis, there are some small oxides along the way, but it's perfectly fully bonded. And the fresh layer, which is in the middle, between twip and twip steel, it could look like it's, there is no bonding because the BSD variant shows it lack non-indexed uh, points, but actually it's severely deformed, this is the reason. And as you can see on the chemical maps, it's fully bonded as well, so here is the iron, for example. And there are no oxides anymore. These are the uh, tensile experiments, and two of them were perfectly uh, bonded until the very end, until the fracture, and we intentionally kept the one specimen which was delaminated in the early stage and this delamination to this kind of materials it's, it's really drastical. So even though that the, uh, all the layers were not damaged, they delaminated and this resulted that they were acting alone. And that's why we have elongation only up to around 15-17% and that's it. That's the failure. So, if we would cut then along this, this specimen which was delaminated, we could see, okay, this is our layer that was delaminated, all the others they kept more or less good. Interesting is that um, the deformation lenses, the lenses, they are actually brittle. They do not deform in a ductile manner. However, after the annealing, they show pretty ductile behavior. They deform with the matrix and they do not form really a significant microcracking. And the reason for this delamination was a really thin chain of oxides due to some imperfections in uh, production of the, the laminate. If we would look up into this area where twip and drip steels meet together, we could see that uh, in the twip steel there was mostly twinning and strong 111 and 001 texture, um, which happened also in the drip steel, but due to drip effect, all of these phases they were uh, changed to a Martin site with a heavy texture. Again, uh, we would zoom out to the, uh, on the on the fracture surface. If we would zoom out on the deformation lens, we could see that it's a dimple fracture type with, uh, with oxides. So it shows us again that uh, we have converted this uh, not very good particles to a, to a form which uh, allows us to not to bring them earlier than we need to. Finally, when we, if we would just watch how the deformation lens evolve, 
we uh, obtain them after the brushing, and this is a really fine stacked uh, pile of layers after brushing. And after annealing, it changes completely. It's just a, um, a mixture of submicron oxides and gamma grains. So in this way, we could theoretically go further and in, uh, reduce the, uh, the thickness of our layers. So far, we could um, reduce the grain diameter. However, we need the, this, this annealing before each step, which um, drops us a bit back. So, um, to, to the conclusions then, um, in principle we have for the first time designed and manufactured this multi-layer twip, twip steel laminate with uh, very good mechanical properties, up to 45% elongation, almost 1 gigapascal tensile strength and 41 work of deformation. We need uh, the intermediate annealing, which we have designed and we show that we need it as well. It's necessary to go further. And we have investigated the uh, change in microstructure of these deformation lenses. So the future work will be aimed on the implementation of this manufacturing technique to increase further the number of rolling passes. So, um, in the end, I would like to thank you for your attention and German Research Foundation for providing the financial support. Uh, the details of the work could be found in material science and engineering. Thank you. Uh, any questions? Yeah, please. Uh, as I understood you, that uh, basically the, the, the material layer basically failed due to um, surface problems of the brush. I mean that that thick, that specimen that delamination. Yeah, mean. delamination. So do you think that basically the most most problem is currently the <coughs> preparing of the surface when you sandwich them together? Yes, yes. This is the main problem for this type of laminates. Uh, if we use this kind of steels, which are corrosion resistance, yeah. but as a drawback, they <laughs> oxidize very quickly. Even if we uh, if we treat them before with exit, uh -huh. we remove the layer, we do the brushing really fast, and then we do the bonding. Still, it's oxidize oxidizing really fast. So, yeah, this is the main problem, right? And do you think that it can be overcome, or? Sure, I mean. We just started to provide this kind of experiments and to other specimens they show perfect results. There are no delamination at all. Oh, yeah. uh, so, and this one, the bad one, we just kept to, to show you uh, how tremendous it could be. <coughs> okay. Any okay. questions? Another? Um, yes. Yeah, you mentioned that there is no any texture orientation. Can you explain why? But because after annealing. After annealing. Yeah. Okay. Sure. Uh, after the rolling, of course, we do have strong texturization. Okay. Yeah. Okay. More questions? No. So let's thank again.